Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews, a 2022 year in review, where we sit down with past guests from the last 12 months and talk to them about 2022 and look forward into 2023. Today, we are sitting down with our guest from October's Municipal Month on the Cross Border Interviews, the current mayor of Grand Prairie, Alberta, Mayor Jackie Clayton. Mayor, mayor Clayton, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. Great to be here. So, really enjoyed Mayor, my uh, first interview with you and happy to be here. Well, Mayor Clayton, let's pick up where we left off in that October interview. The city was going through a by-election and the current, now current, Councillor Wade Palat was elected in that by-election. How has the council come together as a relatively same but new version of the council that was elected in 2021? Yeah, for sure. Um Although it was extremely sad to lose Councillor Lanners, um, Councillor Plot's a good addition. We've worked, many of us have worked with him before. He had been on uh, council with us previous council, uh, you know, um, a home builder, a developer, a, a small business owner in our community, um, knows councils, uh, knows how um, the systems work easy to transition in for him um, because we li literally right after he got elected a couple weeks later um, after his uh, orientation had headed into four-year budget discussion so um, it was um, um, Wade brings a good perspective um, to council and for some people uh, it wasn't um, a new member so but anytime you had one new person it significantly changes the composition of the team so um, but yeah glad the by-elections out of the way and and it was also very happy to see eight people run for that, you know, for that position. Typically, we hear in municipal by-elections, you get a couple, you get a handful. But we had eight passionate people that were full out running campaigns as if it was a year ago when it was campaign season. Some of them literally doing it 12 months later, almost to the date, full out running campaigns, having meetings. So that that was really great to see. Um, you talk about the makeup and the compensation, uh, compensation of the uh, the council can sometimes change when someone is newly elected. You're one of the few municipalities that has gone through a by election in 2022. How has it changed? Have you seen a significant change, or because uh, the councillor had already had council experience, while it's a new voice, it's still roughly the same uh, direction and mentality that the previous councillor had before his untimely passing? Well, probably the most important piece of work we did in 2022 was putting together our strategic plan. So the priorities were established. The new councillor comes in, um, figures out where they fit with the priorities that were established without their input. So, uh, you know, this new councillor plot had no input in these strategies. Um, it's it's very unlikely that you're going to change your strategic priorities uh, when it's one person, you know, and adding to a team of nine. But it really, it, it, it takes a while for them to see how they align with the strategies. These strategies are important work that are filtered through our organization. So for seeing how they fit in, but adding one person, um, um, just changes a lot. The conversation has one different voice now. Um, and not that the content or the outcome would change, just that it's a different voice. The previous Councillor Lerners um, had had been part of that conversation to build this strategic plan. Councillor Plot hadn't. So now, you know, there may be questions. Well, why did you get to this point of this being a priority? And, and, and maybe that's not important to them. So um, although one person changes the council significantly. It's not necessarily in a bad or good way. It's just different because there's one person, one new face there. Is it good to have that sort of new voice as well? Because when you're going through budget, which this new councillor did with this uh, uh, this new council and the council that was elected in 2021, and you're looking at that strategic plan, will the new councillor say, well, why did we do it? And then it makes you as mayor and as council think, why are we doing it this way? Why are we? That's a great question to ask because we went through this process of the strategic plan earlier this year, and we just assume that we all are on the same page. And this new council is asking those why or why not questions. Absolutely. And so we will do um, a, a check in on our council in January, which will be one year um, following the development of the strategic plan to see does this still really align with council councillors individual priorities does it still fit for the needs of our community has there been anything that 
you know, we've needed to pivot on. Um, but I, I think it brings up a good point. Asking those questions, well, why did you put this there? Why did you get here? A lot of the times in the conversations, it just reinforces it reminds council to think about why that was a priority. And then, and you think of the work that's been done uh, in 2022 to go, yes, that's still a priority. Yes, it's important. And this is where we are to date. So it, it, it solidifies some of the work that you've done. It also makes you have an opportunity to go, okay, do we need to tweak that at all? So I think it's a good introspective look at, at the work that we are doing and, and the plan that we put out as a team. Now, I want to look at 2022 as the, the whole year now. Um, we are coming up to the end of the year. For you, for the mayor of Grand Prairie, before we talk about the city, how was your 2022 as mayor? Uh, for me personally, it was a great year. I mean, the, the council was really on a great trajectory. We set out through our strategic priorities to talk about uh, four buckets of work and really where they're, those aligned to be um, innovative efficiencies and economic readiness. Getting, making sure that we're helping support build a strong economy, ready for new investment, uh, inclusive caring community where we're promoting multiculturalism and supporting our communities most vulnerable through programs um, and engaging relationships where we're highlighting successes of other stakeholders and levels of government. Uh, really, I think all overarching sort of lens that we put over it is the quality of life. We know that Grand Prairie is a great place to live, work, do business, invest, have families, but we just think that more people need to know that. I had the opportunity of hosting 23 mid-sized city mayors here in May, and anytime we have that, or whether we host a hockey tournament or a, a cultural event or a concert, we hear it, oh, I've never been to Grand Prairie, wow, your community is amazing. So for us, it was really getting out there, sharing our stories, but bringing our municipal partners together. On a couple of occasions, us, the MBA Greenview and the County of Grand Prairie, went on small excursions where we would go to Calgary and talk to the energy industry, or where we'd be in Calgary and talk about innovation and investment and anytime uh, my council has an opportunity to share the story we take that opportunity tell our stories tell our successes and really get Grand Prairie at the table of every conversation so we know and we believe that Grand Prairie is a really connected vibrant community we just want more people to know about it so for me it's been an excellent year as being the mayor because this council has um, been the strongest council that I've worked with you know to the three terms I've been elected and they move quickly, which I love. Um, they're passionate. They want to work harder every single day. And uh, it's great leading a team that's as passionate as you are as a mayor. So I like to work hard and, and I'm extremely passionate. So when the team behind me is saying, yeah, go, 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 it's really encouraging. So what's been the highlight? What's been the one moment in the last 12 months that you could look back and you go, you know what? This is why this, this made 2022 a good year for the city of Grand Prairie and myself as mayor. Well, you know, there definitely is a couple items there. I think uh, um, last year in December, so not within 2022, the regional hospital opened. Uh, it's, a you know, an incredible facility that we're very fortunate to have. Also in 2022, the downtown rehabilitation project, first four phases, came to a conclusion. That was a four-year, a little bit of a, a stumble there with COVID, but uh, a four-year rehabilitation, $44 million investment into our downtown core, you know, upgrading infrastructure, Structure, um, enhancing the curb appeal. Uh, in turn, there was development incentive grants that came through facade grants, etc. So it really improved not only the infrastructure, but it, it enhanced the streetscape. And in turn, we've seen significant uh, retail investment. One of the priorities that came out of that project was we want to see residential investment downtown. There's been one, pro uh, two projects now to date, and we're looking for another significant one. Um, but I think that you know that was in the right direction. We also opened. Um, a bike skills park in, in an area of our community, in the north uh, east area of our community that didn't have a recreational amenity like that prior. So that was a great opportunity. In the southeast, we opened an activity reception center, which is a low cost um, facility, um, not only capitally, but for, for people to be able to go there. You can go and indoor skate uh, board in the winter. You can go there and play pickleball. It doesn't have a court floor. Uh, it's very simple in technology, but it really just brings people inside in the winter. It, it, it can be a community gathering place. Um, we have a mobile skate park that we move to neighborhoods in the summer. In the winter, it goes in there. So you have a combination of sports. So we opened that this year. We also took on 
a sort of a uh, in, with intent, a an approach of getting our community back together. So we had more events in 2022 than this city's ever seen. Whether it went from Experience Grand Prairie, where we had a a downtown outdoor concert that was free, and Trooper was there, right? So you get to see Trooper for free in the middle of the streets in downtown. We had you know a heritage festival. We had multiple um, new events that um, that we in January of last year introduced our Grand Winter Fest. Now it's you know. It'll be coming back this January, even bigger. So we really just wanted to, uh, following COVID, not only support our economy through incentive and development opportunities through Invest GP, but also get people out. You know, you might live next door to somebody you didn't see them for a year. Well, let's go to the park together and and go to the folk fest or go to a free concert or go to a cultural event. And so I really think that that was a. a a significant event as well. I mean, there's there's endless things that we could talk about that happened in 2022, but I really think the community came together and, and we saw significant investment. I want to talk about that for a second. I want to just jump on here for a quick second and ask this question. 2022 is the first year in the kind of post-pandemic world. Some people are still saying it's here. Some people are still masking. We still want people to go get vaccines if you haven't already. How important was it for you as mayor to drive the community forward while still trying to figure out the ongoing issues with COVID-19? Because you want to get out of it. You want to bring your city forward, but you still have this in the background that you have to say, okay, we have to be cautious and we can't run with the ball too quickly. But we also have to realize that if we don't, we're going to be a stagnant city and we just don't need that right now. Yeah, and I think in my personal opinion, it was an opportunity to say the information is out there, uh, assess it and and implement it in your own personal life how you choose to. Um, We know previously our community didn't have the highest uptake in vaccinations, but people that wanted to took that choice dealt with it responsibly. We are seeing in our own organization, people are sick, they're staying home. We know how to be more nimble in regards to illness in our organization, but our community, um, we believe that the information's there, people wanted to be out together, growing the economy, rebuilding friendships. Um, and if you chose not to be part of that, we totally understand that. We wanted to provide opportunities for people that chose to want to be out there, to re-establish relationships, to to enjoy our community, and, and to celebrate, you know, the significant impact that COVID had to our community, to our friendships, to our personal well-being, and and really support people's mental well-being, physical well-being, and just get people together. If you chose not to be part of it, then that was your choice as well. Was it was it surprising to you that so many people wanted to get back out and actually enjoy themselves and go out to these events that you're talking about, but also volunteer and get back into the community and actually help out and pitch in? Yeah, not not a complete surprise. Council um, knows our community well. Council believed that people really wanted this. Um, council initiated the we're hearing that people want to get back together. Let's provide them an opportunity that's low cost. Uh, inclusive and really just as you know sort of one significant event a month that people can go to there's enough private events as well the Bear Creek Folk Fest the East Coast Garden Party uh, Comic-Con different events that take on in our community Um, so we just really supplemented that with with uh, city round events and I think uh, um, we saw great numbers Canada Day we had a significant turnout Um, so I think that generally people were extremely happy to get together with to get out to see people um and like i said council really heard that on numerous times of the need in our community to be able to do that to celebrate now we are recording this on the last week of november and on monday night the day after uh, we we're recording this uh council voted and approved a operating capital budget with a 1.71 percent increase this is huge and I know that say an increase is always something that may residents may not look as as a positive, but for a municipality to keep it under inflation is huge. How important was it for you to look at this budget in a more detailed look this time? Because I'm looking at 1.7, I'm going, hopefully my municipality does that as well, but it's not going to. So for you, is that a big win, 1.71%? Oh, it's a huge win. I, I agree with your comments in regards to anytime there's an increase, it has an impact on people. Um, 
an increase isn't something you celebrate. Uh, times are tight. We understand that it, when you go to the fuel pump, the grocery store, when you're getting ready for Christmas and you're shopping, prices have gone up significantly. So we know any increase also has an impact on people's wallet books. Um, but I think that, um, you know, we want to be cognizant of what we're spending. Originally, through early discussions, there was discussions at some point based on the needs and 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 the goals of council that it could look like an 8% increase. When administration brought it to us, it was at 3%. And we originally thought we'd be two days. We took three and a half solid days, line by line of, of finding opportunities. This wasn't um, a simple just cutting services. We actually added amenities. We increased services. We increased in some capital projects. We were able to um, use some reserves where appropriate, find some a grant funding where appropriate. I think that it's it's significant work. I'm extremely proud of the work my council did. It really um, makes me feel good to think that over six years cumulatively, um, this count, previous council and this council saw about a 2% increase over six years. You know, And it's just to think of the work that we've done, the amenities we've added, the capital projects we've done. If you think back to the beginning of those six years, we were doing approximately $7 million in road rehabilitation work. Previous council increased it to 11. Last year it was 18. This year it's gonna be 20. So if you put all those years together and look at the capital work that we've added to our community, um, it's significant. And the, and the comparable rate of inflation cumulatively is about 20%. So you know, if you think that we added 2% over six years and inflation was 20% over six years, it's significant. And then the additional capital work. We heard through community engagement that roads continue to be a top priority and now they're the number one priority again. So council did add $20 million for capital road work. We added a million and a half in pedestrian links. We increased our large scale tourism funding by you know doubled it to $200,000. We are implementing an urban forest strategy for the beautification of some areas of our city for a quarter of a million dollars. We increased our funding in snow and ice control so that people that are using transit will have the bus stops cleared. Uh, we increased um, the access to people that want to go to the activity reception center. You know, ten thousand dollars of free drop-ins were added in there. So we did significant uh, work in adding capital adding not limiting services not cutting not reducing jobs or services we increased while we kept it at 1.7 and i tell you it it wasn't easy um, administration worked extremely hard council had a ton of questions they hammered them for three and a half days and collectively we came at 1.71 and i'm just really proud of the work we did um i'm gonna ask a weird question and i apologize for this because in Alberta, we the municipalities pass their budgets in the fall. So October, November, December, possibly January, if they have to hold over. The provincial government doesn't come out with their budget till April, though. So I, I got to ask the question, how do you budget in a time when you're budgeting on the assumption you're going to get something from the provincial government, whether it be grants, whether it be funding, when the provincial government is about to come out with their budget in April and it could be completely different. So this 1.71% could actually be 1.8, 1.6. It all depends on the provincial government's funding. So how do you account for an unknown variable like the provincial government's funding? Well, there's a couple of pieces there. Um, last year, uh, Minister Tave announced a, a, consistent MSI funding, which is now called LGFF. It was, there was variable numbers previously. Now we knew what we we're getting for the next, for this year and the following years, that helps. But when grants come available, um, those are just bonuses. If in following in 2021, um, in late in 2020, the provincial government and federal government decided that to support municipalities through economic investment. So we were able to turn around significant projects and put together our largest capital plan in the city's history. So that meant the bike skills park got done earlier than expected because it was shovel ready. That meant the activity reception center got done earlier than expected. It meant that we were able to add significant money into our road rehabilitation. So as a community, our um, administration worked really hard recognizing projects that could qualify for these grants. So now we've approved a budget. The provincial government will come out with their budget. We know our LGFF number. However, if they announce programs, that's just 
added value, if we have, and it's kind of gravy, if you want to call it that, because then we have an opportunity to see a surplus at the end of the year because a project may have qualified for a grant. So then council makes a decision whether to put that surplus in surplus into reserves, apply it to a different pro project that maybe didn't qualify for that grant. So I think um, the announcements, um, albeit, um, you know, not succinct in our timing, there's still items on 2024, 2025, this is a four-year budget that we have unfunded or we'll discuss in deliberations next year. So there are opportunities to move up pro um, projects, et cetera, uh, based on provincial announcements. And our administration works really hard to be nimble in that regard. When the province comes out with programs, we sort of move things around based on that. I want to turn back to 2022 in review. We talked about the good. We talked about the budget. But I want to go back to what you saw as something that you could have could have improved, improved on. Is there a moment in 2022 you went, ah, that just didn't go our way and I wish it didn't happen and it just put a bad light on uh, our city or in that community, in that little subdivision? Well, there's, I mean, we are faced with, uh, any mid-sized city mayors that came up here that, you know, uh, Mayor Frank from Strathcona County said to me, you know what, Jackie, you're, you're a mid-sized city with big city issues, big city amenities, and mid-sized revenue. So, you know, when we uh, are largest and pretty much only form of revenue is through taxation and the demands on your community are significant, um, it's, it's, it's a complex problem. There are things such as we have more homeless per capita than any city in Alberta. Um, we, you know, although the total number of approximately 220 people being homeless may not seem like a large number per se, but when you're per capita, the, the, the highest number is significant. We know the mental health needs and demands in our community through um, opioid uh, overdoses and supports that are needed are significant. We know that the South has been given uh, provincial support and, and Edmonton and Calgary recently have been given support. We in the North and as the regional hub have not seen that support to date. So therefore there's been uh, items that we've taken on upon ourselves to make the quality of life better for our residents and better for the people that have acute needs. But it's on the back of my taxpayers and not on this through support of the provincial government. We're working on initiatives to support this region in those sort of needs. I think that those are, are things that could go better. And also, anytime you take on construction projects, there's things that, you know, if you've ever renovated a house and you open a wall, you don't know what's behind that wall until you own the house and open the wall, right? So we've had some uh, construction projects that could have gone a little smoother. Um, but I think we're really working hard in that provincial sort of arena in regards to evaluating and expressing our needs Um explaining the value of what the urban hub does for the north um, we know now that in 2021 the it was always around 298 298,000 that we serviced within our primary and tertiary markets now we're over 300 we're at 301,000 is the number i saw a couple of weeks ago so we're over that 300,000 mark of what we provide our forest industry is strong, our energy industry is strong, our agriculture industry is st st strong, but we're also the service hub, whether it's professional services, medical services, retail services. So there's a significant demand on the urban hub and, and limited opportunities for uh, revenue in order to be able to support those needs. You, you've segue into my last segment here quite well, Mayor Clayton, and that is 2023. Looking forward, 2022 is coming to an end. And as municipal councillors, you're always looking forward as municipal council. So what does 2023 have in store for the city of Grand Prairie, but also yourself? Yeah, so as you mentioned, the 1.71% uh, increased budget is uh, something that we are looking forward to seeing how that plays out in 2023. However, that being said, we don't know what the education tax looks like from the province. So explaining that to when people get their, their tax bill, well, you told me it was only going up X number of dollars. You know, there's that unknown. So 2023 for us looks like continued strong advocacy. It, it really is on, on items of priorities that support our community, addressing the high um, electricity transmission and distribution rates. Um, in Alberta, the average house in Edmonton and Calgary in 2021 paid about $500 annually uh, in distribution and transmission rates. 
in the city of Grand Prairie and other regions outside of Edmonton and Calgary, it's as much as $1,300. So almost three times the amount. If every house in Edmonton and Calgary were to pay $7 more per month, it would be pretty much equalized across the province. So that um, that was a, a resolution that got passed at AB Muni's as well as RMA. So it's supported by muni municipalities across the province. So that includes Edmonton and Calgary, where you know that may show an increase to them. But across the province, municipal leaders um, supported that resolution. We also know that um, attraction and retention of healthcare professionals in our region is um, probably the number one priority recently. It's surpassed in the conversation of, of electricity, uh, transmission and distribution, only because it's such an emergent need. Um, we have a beautiful facility that attracts great healthcare professionals. Um, and, and we're working with AHS to be able to keep those people here and attract more. Um, approximately, there's not approximately, there's 11 emergency, or sorry, operating rooms in our new regional hospital. At the height of it, I think we saw six in use. And so it's really underutilized. The hospital was built for growth, which is great, but there's been times when they're down to two ORs and that's just not acceptable. So there needs to be support um, in that attraction and retention effort. Uh, the Highway 40X Ring Road uh, is a significant, it's the number one regional transportation priority. So right now there's an expansion of Highway 40 South heading um, through the, um, to the Montney and the Duvernay specifically right in the heart of the Municipal District of Greenview. We um, are advocating as a region for a, a ring, the, the next quarter of the ring road. So the first quarter of the ring road has been done 43X. This is 40X. So, and it will, um, it, it, it uh, represents a significant part of highway. Um, currently the problem is, is um, traveling between um, the municipalities goes right through the heart of my city. We've seen the over-dimensional vehicle numbers come up almost to 2018 numbers. And that means not only is it significant work where we have um, staff going out and doing pole turns um, and, and industry pays for those pole turns so the over-dimensional vehicles can get through. It also means that you have heavy truck traffic in the heart of my city, which is obviously a safety concern. So that 40X would alleviate some of that. So that's the regional number one transportation priority. Another piece that I'm really proud of the work we're doing um, collaboratively with the forest industry, as well as um, approximately 10 municipalities across the province, we're working on building a advocacy, an advocacy strategy on rail disparity. Uh, in the North in particular, uh, rail services um, are not optimal. We've seen industry um, have product that that goes bad sitting on the ground waiting for cars we know that investment in in the north in rail has not been a federal priority um, we will work collectively um, with the municipalities across the province not to represent just forestry but um, you know we're hearing it from energy we're hearing it from uh, wheat and barley we're hearing it across the board the auctioning of rail cars that pits industries against each other in peak seasons there's many layers to this so we're working um, with alberta forest products and and multiple communities across the province to to lobby um, the federal government and cn in turn on enhancing that there's many smaller things that you know we're working on um, such as getting a canadian uh border services agency in our in our airport um we are working on like i mentioned earlier mental health supports and and treatment opportunities in our region so 2023 um in our four-year budget there wasn't a ton of huge capital work done in 2023 other than road rehabilitation and overlay there's not a you know not a new significant building being built. However, we're, one cool thing I'll mention we're doing uh, council approved um, money where we'll implement one covered community space in a neighborhood each year. So that will mean in the winter you'll have a covered outdoor skating space. In the summer it'll be an asphalt area where you can shoot hoops, use a remote, remote control vehicle, have a birthday party, and so it's just really bringing those communities together. Doesn't mean you need a brand new facility. It's literally going to look like a carport that keeps the snow off, 
One side might be sheltered to keep the wind out, but just to bring communities together and provide that recreation space. But I think uh, 2023 primarily is advocating for those needs that really are going to support our business community, our people and their needs, and just the region as a whole. I look forward to that collaborative approach. And so a lot more of that advocacy that we've already initiated. Uh, speaking of advocacy, I want to ask this last question before we wrap up here, Mayor Clayton, and that is 2023 is a provincial election. How important is it for you to advocate with all parties to make sure these issues that you've just mentioned, and there is a significant amount of advocacy work that you're going to be doing, it sounds like in 2023 as mayor, how important is it to, for you to make sure these advocacy conversations start today and not during the election in 2023 provincially? Well, absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, we've done significant advocacy work in 2022. We'll keep on that path. Anytime we have an event such as a go to Edmonton, where we um, invite all the MLAs the night before the budget, bring 50 Grand Prairie business people, introduce them to 50 Edmonton business people. We invite all sides of the room. So, um, you know, we have regular conversations with many NDP elected MLAs. Um, anytime we have an event, they're invited as well. It's about, this really isn't about sharing information to a partisan group. This is about sharing Grand Prairie to the entire province, to the entire country, to the world. We are through brand strategy reviews and, and internal initiatives, we're going to uh, walk like a big city, talk like a big city, and be the best mid-sized city in Canada. And every single day, we'll treat it that way, How from how you answer the phone to how you reply to an email to how you talk to an elected official. Those priorities are relevant, and they're important to my council. So having more people from any area, any arena, any partisan party at the table just sort of supports that initiative. The more people that know how awesome Grand Prairie is, the easier my job is. Well, I can tell you that people know where Grand Prairie is because in our municipal month that we did in October, uh, your interview with me was our top, one of the top three of the month with over 6,000 downloads from across Canada and around the world. So people have taken notice about Grand Prairie from just my perspective. And if I could just do a little bit more to help you tell the story of Grand Prairie, I'm happy to do that. Um, Mayor Clayton, I want to thank you so much for sitting down again and recapping 2022 and the what the future holds for 2023 so thank you so much oh you know what the pleasure is all mine chris i really like i've told you before anytime i can talk about my community in the region and the opportunities in this region and i'm happy to do it and uh i just think that these are easy conversations to tell you what's going on in my community good or, or bad is is typically something i love to do you know we make tough decisions as municipal leaders on a daily basis but i'm looking forward to 2023 as you mentioned with the election, that brings an opportunity. And I think that um, regardless of what it brings as an outcome of the election, it brings an opportunity to tell your story more often because there's more people out that want to know about your story during an election. So thank you so much. I really appreciate these opportunities and I'm happy to be here anytime you want me. Well, 2023, we're changing up the format a little bit and we're going more for municipal focus. So we might be talking a lot more in 2023 or some of your other counselors might be talking with me as well. So. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a great opportunity. I'd love to, uh, even in an informal setting, uh, introduce you to my council and, and sort of, it might give you an opportunity to sort of see where people's uh, areas of interest are and, and it would help with some of your content. I'm happy to arrange that. Well, we're taking the show on the road in 2023. So awesome. We will well, be up, you we know will what? Be up Grand there Prairie would Grand love Prairie. to be your first community. We, we would host you in a heartbeat. We will. We might do a live show up there and broadcast it live. That to would be excellent. Followers. So there you go. We That's heard awesome. it here first. So Mayor Clayton, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me again. Um, I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. Um, 2022 has been rough for me because we've gone through some treatments. Uh, I've gone through some treatments. You taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and chat with some unknown show from Calgary, Alberta. It has been an honor of my lifetime. And um, as much as you get to promote your city, I get to promote myself. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do these two interviews with us. And I look forward to our budding partnership in the future to have uh, the show up in Cal uh, Grand Prairie. So thank you so much. Yeah, well, you know what? The honor is truly mine, Chris. And and I wish you the best of luck in, in your upcoming surgery. Uh, you have a strong spirit, I can tell, even through virtual. Uh, you'll be fine. 
And I and I'm happy to host you, like I said. And and we could do a regional thing. The MD and the county of uh, Grand Prairie and the city of Grand Prairie love to collaboratively host people. So you let me know when you're ready to come north, and we'll be happy to have you. We will do that. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews 2022 Year in Review with Mayor Jackie Clayton of Grand Prairie, Alberta. Have yourself an excellent day, and remember, everyone, get off social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with someone. Helps our democracy, helps our society, and helps us be a better Better people. So with that, this has been the Crossboard Interviews. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, Thanks, Chris. keep talking.